first beer review of the year. I did a cheeky wine review at two in the morning when I was half asleep because I didn't want to drink the bottle and not get the review. Um, but yeah, first actual proper beer review of the year. So from Staffordshire Brewery, formerly Leek, and it's their Cheddleton. You can only just about see the writing on there. And it's their New Year's oh. Ale. And it's classed as a 5% golden premium beer. So yeah, Ooh. first beer of the day. I've not touched a single drop of anything today. Happy New Year. And uh, yeah, first beer of the day. What's all that glass? I could have sworn I cleaned it. No, I'm okay. So a New Year's beer on New Year's Day. You can't fault it really, I suppose. And these fellas are quite good, the Staffordshire Brewery, because they actually make a Christmas beer. Happy New Year. No, no, no. We um, did the beer review down here. Then went up the house. I took a bottle of wine with me. And uh, Happy New Year. And uh, yeah, we didn't. Uh, I, I drank the wine last night, but didn't really, didn't really have a heavy one at all. I did come down the shed a bit later, though. Yeah, I was a bit, uh, it was a late review, I was half asleep. <laughs> I'd, I'd nodded off a little bit, then woke up and thought, ah, sod it, two o'clock, do a review. We were watching telly till late, so just sat there watching telly. You could hear all the fireworks going off, but, you know, I, I'm not paying for fireworks. Got enough money to spend, you know, got enough stuff to spend on them, wasting hundreds of quids on fireworks. Some people have some pretty damn impressive fireworks. So these fellas... Very crafty, and much like Brewdog are good at exploiting the media for what they do, i.e., the you know, oh, come do we vaccinating in our pubs? Oh, bless him, not good for dogs. My dog don't bother him, never has done, but yeah, not good for doggies. These fellas are doing it in a different way, so they've got a Christmas ale, they've actually got a Boxing Day ale, and they've also got the New Year's ale. And to be fair, it's a, you know you can't fault the marketing, can you? If you're going to bring out something and call it that, then it's fair. I think it's a, it's a cracking idea. And the Maggie's Beers, Wines and Spirits reviews just shows up on this glass. So on certain glasses, it shows up reasonably well. I can it should have been black though. There you go. So nice golden pour, white head, bit of hops. More traditional malty uh, beer, if I'm being honest. Wife cooked me a cooked us a lovely dinner earlier. I had the starter, struggled through the starter, got to the dinner, and, and I couldn't hardly eat anything. I ate a couple of bits of beef and that, so I've still got some stomach ache now. But my taste buds are fine, there's nothing wrong with the taste buds or anything, but yeah, it's damn brew dog, they are the masters, absolute masters of uh, manipulation i reckon you know they know how to get um oh lovely yeah they really know how to get good exposure for their business so a company like theirs are making a massive amount anyway that gold uh, can job before christmas meant they sold a lot of beer because everyone wants to get the gold cans don't they and then obviously this as well yeah they do they are exp i mean you've got that climate thing as well they really are exploiting um <clears throat> the media then the media is stupid enough to do it i mean i heard that last night in london there's a bit a bit of a kerfuffle um i didn't watch it but good evening Bit of a kerfuffle in London about um, the lights and uh, using the lights as a political statement. So you've got the Christmas lights going off and they've got these drones up. One, it said the NHS, which I think that's probably a good thing. Then one was like a pro-EU thing and then another one was Black Lives Matter. Talk about bringing politics into a New Year's display. You know, it's happening way too much. Politics shouldn't be in football. All these people taking a knee needs to pack it in. That would turn around to them and say, uh, you know, they used to ban people for wearing, having a T-shirt and then doing that, lifting another T-shirt up. 
with with some statements on you know so um regardless of what the um what what the campaigning for it shouldn't shouldn't be on uh, yeah it's ridiculous isn't it it's um you know the poppy these people we will not a lot of people won't be here now if it wasn't for all that <laughs> It's my first one of the day, this is. I'm actually totally sober. Even my piss looks more normal colour. Uh, not that you really need to know that, obviously. But... Oh. Bloody hell. I actually had a really, really quiet night, really. I mean, two beers last night. The Imperial. That gave me a wallop in that day. Went up the arse and I was half asleep after that. But we just sat watching TV. A quiet New Year's Eve. Sending loads of New Year's, um, you know, greetings out to people. Yeah, like me too, really. Two beers, bottle of wine, and then uh, some, I think it was Kahlua. Uh, a, a, a drab of Kahlua at the end of the night. <laughs> It's actually nice not to be feeling it. Although I've got stomach aches. I don't know if I've... Well, the wife was ill yesterday with something. She had tablets in the end. And I'm not sure whether I've got the same sort of bug. And I couldn't even eat my bloody dinner. And that's, that's not good. Did you? Bless you. How many is that then? No, it's not COVID. My taste buds are fine. Although I have been coughing a little bit. Happy New Year. How, how much is a year's supply of um, brew dog then? Because let's be fair, a year's supply to a beer drinker is very different from a year's supply to somebody who drinks once a month or once every two months. Yeah, it needs to be about a thousand cans. A couple of cat meals, maybe not a thousand, but yeah, definitely. Fucking hell, that's great, isn't it? As long as you have to stick to one particular type of can, or, you know, one brand, or can you do a mix? I was looking at some, there was a competition on Facebook this morning, and it was something where, a bit like one of these perfect poor things. Any of the main beers? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like more of my I do, but I buy it and then it runs out of date before I ever get to use it. You have to be in the mood for it. Perfect draft. No, this this was called something else. Not perfect draft, but it's a similar sort of thing where, you know, it pours out a perfect pint. You get them in three different sizes. Um, nah, I'm not that fussed, really. You know, we don't really entertain that much, even in normal times. And if I was going to have a bit of a party... I'd just um, crack open the barrels. And you see, you know, when you've got plastic barrels, you can get the top that you can screw in the CO2 canisters into the top. And so basically, in some ways, I can do that anyway, and a lot bloody cheaper. Yeah, it's not called Crups or Blade. I think it was Uno you know, Draft or something on them. There's a competition on Facebook. It, it flashed up on my feed this morning. I probably won't ever see it again now, but... I'm still waiting to hear back from all the competitions I've entered before Christmas, but the only thing I've won is um, is that bottle of Imperial Start and a and a Benny hat. That's all I've won. But you know, can't win them all, can you? I suppose. Quick fits competitions ended last night, so it'd be interesting to see if I've won anything there. What you don't want to win is something shit. I mean, some of the competitions that I've no, I've been absolutely fine apart from belly ache, and that's nothing drink related. That's just. Uh, the wife had a bit of stomach ache yesterday and then she had to set tablets and she got over it. Me, I couldn't even eat my uh, dinner today. So, But I'm not even hungry. It's like I'm really, really bloated. So, God knows what that's about. We did have a late Chinese last night, though. Uh, we ordered ordered, to, ordered it at ten past seven. It came at quarter to ten. Yeah. My wife was having dicky fits by the end. You know, she's ready to kill somebody. 
well, I won't, I won't going to bother doing a beer review. And then somebody commented, it says, you're doing a beer review tonight, I think. Uh, Shall I, shan't I? I thought, yeah, okay, let's go and do a beer review. Plus, I've got to get this one out of the way anyway, the New Year's Day, because it'll be out of date by the time next year comes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I if I needed to text them just for that uh, reason, the prune juice that is, I would definitely do it. You know, but I won't do it on camera. Oh dear. No. Got a bit of brewing to do tomorrow. I'm going to start me uh, me Amarone um, kit. Um, Eighty quid's worth of kit. I'll need to make sure that I do everything down to the book. No messing about, no trying to add a bit more sugar. Make sure the sterilization's absolutely top notch. And use me best, use me best bucket as well. Um, the one with the biggest bucket, because you really, if you're doing brewing, you need a 30 litre bucket minimum. Oh, German beer. I'm interested in doing kits from, you know, uh, that aren't available in this country that easily. You don't, you don't see them. I don't. When I worked at Sainsbury's, you know, we had out of date stuff, but I took it home a year and a half out of date and it was fine. God knows how it got into the shop a year and a half out of date. Cardo whiskey. Cardo is a whiskey, I'm sure it is. I used to know them all. You know when I worked at Sainsbury's because you, you, well, if you're if you're in, a, in an environment all day long, you you're there. You you're remembering it all the time, and also when customers ask you questions, you need to know what you're on about. Good evening. Oh. Ah, yes, I thought it was. Yeah, I think. That's a dangerous move for the European bottle uh, beer makers because then British beer, British people will start just buying British beers. So in some ways, stuffs them up. Yeah, the Easter eggs are in the back from before Christmas. I've seen Easter eggs in the middle of December sat in the back waiting to go out. And you're there and you walk past it and you're, you know, you're a staff member and it's like, fuck's sakes. You know, you just walk back and think it twats and carry on walking talk about obesity <laughs> yeah well let's hope easter is going to be happy for a lot of us you know if they roll out this vaccinating and a, 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 a super massive you know way of doing it then i mean for me i would use you know like brew dog was saying with their pubs i would use all the pubs all around the country Must have missed that. Did they do that with new beers? Oh. <laughs> Easter eggs, eh? And Happy New Year to you as well. Yeah, fucking Easter eggs. Ah, oh, it just makes you sick. I want to see Easter beers. Never mind bloody Easter eggs. Easter beers. And, uh, and more themed beers. Morrison's used to be so good at themed beers. They used to have Christmas, Halloween, even Valentine's Day and Father's Day beers as well. And Easter beers. Yeah, they're missing a trick, I do. I really do. I know there's the logistics of getting the chuffing beers out there, but it's not that hard. They do it for Christmas stuff, don't they? So you can do it for Easter and, you know, beers. Let's hope some of the big breweries actually pull the fingers out this year and get back to normality. I.e. Richwood, Shepherd Neem and some of the others. So, really easy going, traditional, multi. Um, I'm doing this one and then I'm going to review uh, some cheaper chips beer straight after. Next Christmas mince pies. Different. Oh, they did. Yeah, two reviews tonight and then that's it. Going up the arse, just chilling. Uh, hopefully my stomach gets better for tomorrow. But, uh, 
temperatures warmed up a bit. I don't know if it has where you live, where you where you all live, but certainly warmed up in Nottingham. Oh, bloody hell. Saltair's triple chocolate is gorgeous as well. And having it in an Easter egg. Jesus. Now that's something, isn't it? That's, um, bloody hell. That's box ticking, that is. Ooh. There's so much you can do with that sort of thing. It's a bit weird, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Start eating the Easter egg and drinking the flipping beer at the same time. Just make you wonder who, put, who, who cuts out the uh, the top of the Easter egg, though, because you've got to cut so much of it out or stab it a bit so you can actually pour into it. I bet that's messy. You know, when you're drinking it and half it's going down your bloody front. Mm. It's novelty, I suppose. Isn't it? I suppose it's like Christmas with Baileys and milk chocolate. You go to these, a lot of these shops to do Baileys in, in the milk chocolate. I mean, the wife did for me the other day. She made some hot chocolate, did some Baileys into it. I couldn't taste the Baileys. So I went into the kitchen and they just glunk, glunk, glunk. Could taste it then. Whoa. Yes, went down a tree then. I think it's that. It's 5%, so it's not overly strong. Uh, it's To me, it's just well-branded beer you know it's just a golden premium beer with a new year's um but really good, very good with the rudolph yeah and uh, they've got a boxing day beer as well and, and they also do a christmas ale and it, i think it's good for, it's it's clever theming yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, you have to look at the health and safety side of things, wouldn't you? You think to yourself, don't want some, some sweaty, dirty hand and bloke touching the chocolate. That's how coronavirus spreads, you know, all that. Oof. I suppose if to do it this year, they'll, they'll give you a, a hand sanitizer as well at the same time, as well as the, uh, the waxed paper. Good evening. It's funny that, you know, the coffee stout. It's funny because my next review is actually here and it's the amber ale harpers but yeah the coffee stout i actually didn't like that as much as i thought i was going to do it was okay don't get me wrong but i wasn't as impressed with that as i was with the toffee stout the toffee one that we do the harpers toffee now that was nice the coffee one wasn't so enamored by it um i presume it's marston's who make it it looks like marston's bottle Obviously, it's not bloody Aldi you make it. And that Harper's Brewing Company is just, uh, you know, obviously, it's like Averwood. It's just fake names, aren't they? It's a shame, really, because if it was a real company, be, you know, it'd be interesting to see what they bring out. I still think with little, their best time with them, with the doing beers, when Shepherd Neem were doing all them random beers, you go in and every month there's a new random beer out and it just seems to have gone the other way. The Averwoods don't seem to be as many of them as the random beers. I mean, I can remember that they had a strawberry one for Wimbledon. Strawberry and cream or something for Shepherd and Neem. Strawberry and cream for Wimbledon. Yeah, it wasn't too bad as well. And then they had football um, ones for the football. Ah. It's funny, years ago, no one ever used to go in Aldi's. Nowadays, Aldi and Little are so mainstream now. All the rich people have realised that you can get good food cheaper. Oh. So yeah, nice golden beer, traditional, um, multi flavours, a little bit of hops on the nose, um, just a nice golden beer. I mean, this could be called summer ale because it tastes like just a normal summer beer but not bad at all really you know um it breaks you in the new way new year rather you know and you just drank this one already already signed to slur <clears throat> and i promise i've not had nothing today i've been good for a change no this is drink at cold temperature 
yeah, this is definitely a cold temperature beer. Um, much better at cold. Obviously, clever marketing, clever naming of the beer. You know, um, can't fault them. Eight quid for three bottles uh, that I've seen online. Which isn't bad, really, I suppose. You know, it's not supermarket prices, but it's not too bad, I suppose. Um, out of five, for me. Yes, it's like Christmas is over, isn't it? Now nah, it's it's that the the realization that you're going back to work Monday, Sunday afternoon when the you know when it when it fully kicks in that you've got work again on Monday and uh, yeah, then the depression starts to get in. Once you've been back to work for a few weeks, you don't you know it's all gone into it. you know it's all back to normality. You know you're looking forward to the spring and the summer, but that you've got that week of when you go back, it's like oh fuck's sakes i'm back at work and it gets me every year i mean i'm in i'm in a good job but it's still you know still gets you going back um <clears throat> and uh, getting your head back in the work zone and out of the uh you know the holiday zone although it's been a strange old holiday anyway tv's been crap on the old i mean we've got netflix we've got disney plus normal channels even Amazon, God knows why we pay for all them. Um, some pays for Netflix. The wife pays for Amazon and uh, Amazon Prime and um, Disney. But you pay for all these flipping channels. And you look, like last night, we ended up putting bones on on Amazon because there's oh, nothing on TV, nothing interesting. Really. But all them cha 500 channels, bugger all on. And then today, I'm watching TV today. Yeah, I'm watching TV today and I'm watching about walks, these British, the top 100 walks around Britain. And I've got to be honest, there's some amazing places in Britain. You know, I've not really been a person who puts the rest of Britain on my agenda of where to go. But some of the walk, walks in the areas, oh my God, they're amazing. And uh, yeah, this year, if we can't all go abroad this year because of the, you know, virus and worrying about bloody um the effect of brexit but there's some lovely places to walk the only problem is walking there then getting caught out you know that won't be good caught out in some shitty rain or snow and you ain't got all your full gear on yeah the the borders are closed aren't they <laughs> I need to go to Aldi, actually, uh, from a review perspective. The Aldi and Lidl have got quite a few multi-pack beers that I need to get on my review list and then just put the rest of the beers in the fridge for uh, to sit there for months because no one wants, wants to drink them. Unless I'm feeling the need to drink one night, and I'll just go down and neck one. It's usually the case. I've got 23 bottles of um, a Singtao alcohol free lager in the fridge i got 24 i won 24 in, in a in a competition on facebook and the other 23 is still sat up there no one's drinking it so god knows what i'm gonna do with that not many people want alcohol free beer though or lager <laughs> yeah. i mean to, even today i was thinking should i get some should i have a drink and i thought no fuck it i'll just drink cola <laughs> tastes nicer <clears throat> so yeah a 4.0 for this yes i am i'm just gonna uh kill this with you and then i've gone gone over me me 20 minute limit that i, I tried to put on but yeah that's what we get for talking yeah, it was okay i love the uh the branding the theming you know it's all rather crafty i'd rather have the prune wine as well fuck you know <clears throat> <laughs> I understand where they're coming from and, and fair play. You know, if it's if it sells for them, then you can understand why they're doing it. Right, we'll get rid of this one and get on to the next one. Thanks for watching. See you soon. I did say 4.0, didn't I? Yeah, sure I did. Whoa.